points of view from four very different perspectives. The crazy and unpredictable world of professional wrestling as a pure theory creations entertainment network presents a live interactive show where you can be part of a conversation of all things professional wrestling from the major leagues to the independents. This is Fatal Four Way Five on Owen TV. And we welcome you to the Fatal 4-Way, live here on ONTV, the area's only live interactive call-in professional wrestling talk show. We're going to have to come up with a shorter tagline for sure. Yeah, that was very long. Uh, but be that as it may, <laughs> thank you so much for taking time out of your Friday night to give this a watch here as part of the PFC Entertainment Network and Orion Neighborhood Television. Along with Sean Grugel, Brian Boff, and Hollywood Q, I'm Jason Klaus. <laughs> and we welcome you to the show. We have a lot to get to, but we will tell you right out of the gate a couple of things. We are not going to dive too heavy into WrestleMania. We are going to wait for our next uh, episode here, which happens live in two weeks. Uh, that will be all things WrestleMania. But... We still have a lot to cover here this week, and you can call in live and be a part of the conversation. The phone number is 810-331-2829. And uh, look, gentlemen, as, as it has been in the last weeks, months, the professional wrestling business is very much on fire. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if we're talking about WWE, AEW, TNA, like a lot of organizations are trying to make the needle move at this particular part of the year. Um, AEW has really thrown the, they've opened up the checkbook here, Q, and yeah. with the effort to try to make that proverbial needle move, uh, they signed a tremendous, um, I, I guess, class of talent in some regards. I would say two out of three of what is called the triple threat uh, of this new talent for all elite wrestling. Within days of each other, we saw the debut of Mercedes Monet, Will Ospreay, and Okada. Now, of the three... Uh, we'll focus on, on Okada first. This is the guy that was really, in, in all aspects, the hottest free agent in all of wrestling after his contract with New Japan had expired. Now, for people who are not, you know, they don't know a whole lot about this guy, he was essentially the biggest star in, in, overseas in New, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. There was some talk he may come to WWE, but he had already had a working re relationship of some regard with AEW. Tony Khan opens up his piggy bank, and boom, we now have Okada as part of AEW. You combine that with Will Ospreay, very much the same thing. Very talented guy. He has made his name overseas, specifically in Japan. Now he's here on a full-time basis with AEW. And then there's Mercedes Monet, the former Sasha Banks, finally makes her long-awaited debut with AEW, and this was the one, and I mean, it was done brilliantly by, by Tony Khan's part, having it in her hometown in Boston, much like they did with CM Punk. Yeah. Um, but listen, the numbers don't lie, and the, the, the needle moved for a minute, but as soon as uh, we started getting into it, it just seems like it went right back to... The, their normal range. So Q, I'll ask you first, of these three people that are now brand new to AEW, is one of these going to be the one that moves the needle in a positive direction for the company? Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, you know, but I like Okada. I mean, uh, Okada was the most surprising one because he was pretty much the John Cena of the New Japan uh, brand, but here in America, you know, you, you're, you're, you're dealing with a whole different market now. So, uh, but, but the good thing about that, you know, he has that working relationship. They have that working relationship with New Japan, so he can get, actually jump back and forth a little bit. 
But uh, as far as moving needles and stuff, I mean, you might see the needle shake a little bit, you know. You, you, you know how you, you start to run out of gas a little bit and you start <laughs> seeing that little shake there. Right. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. I don't see it. They're having a hard time cracking a million views for uh, for uh, Dynamites. I mean, so CM Punk was really the last needle mover they had. And boy, oh boy, Jack Perry, he's the biggest heel in, <laughs> there, in AEW history right now. There is. Uh, <laughs> it's funny you say that because I read, I read an article um, w w uh, last night, I believe it was, in, uh, in which case the headline read, this is what, what drew me to it. Tony Khan's still very upset with, with talent, but it didn't tell you why he clicked on it, and it was the Jack Perry Jack thing Perry. being blamed for the s subsequent, you know, the leaving of CM Punk. Right. Yeah. Um, and th that was a big blow to the company in a lot of aspects. Some people, you know, they're glad he's gone. Other ones, not so much. <laughs> uh, Sean Will Ospreay. Um, this is a guy... He has a underground fan following. He's very talented. He has a specific way he performs in the ring. Was going to All Elite Wrestling his best move if he was going to leave the comfort zone that he had with New Japan? Boy, does that sound like a trick question. Will Ospreay is in the right place because if he would have went to the WWE, they wouldn't have been able to showcase him the way he needs to be showcased. He would be buried with the amount of talent that's in WWE right now. My issue is, is when you were a wrestler and I was a wrestler, the dream was to go to WrestleMania. Right. But here, everyone, besides Mercedes Monet, is signing with AEW. I don't like Mercedes Monet. We'll get into that <laughs> later. But, you know, uh, Will Ospreay, I, I think... This is the right step for him to go to WWE because he'll be on a more national stage here in America. Whereas Okada, uh, I think if he would have made the jump to the Fed because he had a lot of hype behind him. He did. And now he's wrestling Eddie Kingston and they've already given him a title. So it's no longer about the hunt. It's about putting the gold on the prize pig and, you know, showing it off to, you know, WWE at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So Osprey is in the right spot. Okada, not so much. And Mercedes Monet needs to go back to where she came from. So, Brian, that brings me to you and Mercedes Monet. Sean brings up a great point in that um, Will Osprey is going to benefit from his exposure in AEW as potentially that springboard to WWE l later on. I don't know what the terms of, of, of his contract are. I don't have that in front of me. Same could be said for Okada, but you take a Mercedes Monet who had made her name in WWE as Sasha Banks. So now she's you know perceived and, and has p positioned herself to her credit as bigger than a brand, like she's really you know, utilized her stardom that she got in WWE to try to make a name for, for herself. But does her name a credibility, is that going to be a long-term positive investment for All Elite Wrestling to maintain a more national presence and to stay kind of in competition with WWE? Because I think we can all agree, gentlemen, that... WWE is going further and further ahead of the pack, seemingly with every deal made, with every a month that passes. We're looking, at, we're, we're coming up to WrestleMania that is going to break all of the financial records. There's no doubt about it. So AEW, being a number two, is trying to do anything that, that they can. Is Mercedes Monet a piece of that puzzle to keep them in the hunt? I want to hear this. The problem is, is that's only one piece, and you can't, one wrestler can't do anything. You need competition, and I don't think competition is there. Like, who, who are you going to pin her against to bring eyes to that product? I don't think, she, I think she has a minimum fan following. There's obviously right here out of us four, there's not a fan. Right. Between us four. Right. For a reason. And so with her going there and not really having the competition, what, is she just going to cut promos? 
It's like, what's going to draw the eyes there? Really don't want to see that. Well, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> and, and look at the women's roster they got in AEW. She is obviously going to get overshadowed by a lot of the women that they got going on over there right now. Taya Valkyrie is the first one that pops in my head. She gets in the ring with her, she's going to break her in half. Uh, Willow Nightingale, I mean, she's got a huge fan following at this point. I just don't think Sasha is going to make the amount of money for Tony Khan that he is investing in. That's her. what I was thinking. I'm like, when you think about the investment they're making financially with that, they're not going to see a return in views. Right. Interesting, and like I can't argue with that. But you know, ultimately, the 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 numbers as they come in is going to be very telling as to whether or not this was a good investment on the part of all elite wrestling and you can join in to you can join into the conversation oh we have a call coming in right now so let's uh see what's happening here uh you are live on the fatal four-way who are we talking to uh apparently nobody was it my voice cue did, did i scare him it was oh, it was funny. hulk hogan's son he had a booking <laughs> <laughs> Well, moving on in the headlines, and one more time, if you want to call in the show, join the conversation, 810-331-2829 is the number. Stay on the line when I answer, and I'll be, we'll be more than happy to, to talk to you, but... Uh, don't turn, turn down, down the volume. volume. Yeah, turn, please, turn down the volume <laughs> on your side so you don't, we don't have that really weird feedback. Might and as been. always, be respectful. I think that was a Mercedes fan. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, moving on here with the headlines, the uh, the other thing that came across my radar, WWE has announced two more inductees into the class of 2024 Hall of Fame, two very deserving in my opinion, uh, Thunderbolt Patterson, who one of the most revered names in the history of the business, uh, really a trailblazer in many respects, so to finally see him get his due, his call, uh, I was very happy to hear about this, Sean, yeah, and I would imagine you, you would agree. Oh, Thunderbolt Patterson, uh, I had the opportunity to meet him when he was inducted into the XICW Hall of Fame at Cobo Hall. Mm -hmm. Super guy, uh, genuine, one of a kind. i very, very happy to see him be put into the Hall of Fame. Do you have any experiences with, with Thunderbolt Patterson? Do you, did you follow him at all, Q? Uh, very minimal, but uh, I did go back and listen to some of his promo style. Yeah. It was yeah. very, uh, very Dusty Rose. -like, yeah, yeah. You know? So I, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, we know? discussed that. Yeah. Didn't he try to unionize wrestlers at one point, too? Yeah. He did. I, was, yeah. I was like... Yep. The other one, you know, we got into a conversation uh, on the last episode here about the celebrity involvement into the WWE Hall of Fame. And we threw, I think I used Kid, a Kid Rock ad, as an example, because you look at the celebrity wing, and there's a couple of them that I think that we could agree, yeah, they deserve to be in there. There's other ones that we wished would be in there in, in, instead of you know somebody else or what have you, Kid Rock, for example. Um, Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time, uh, is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I got into a conversation with a younger wrestling fan who took exception to this. I'm like, why is Muhammad Ali being, in, being in, in, inducted into the Hall of Fame? Sean, he, he was one of, the, of the, the pivotal points, the talking points of WrestleMania 1 as special guest referee, but it goes beyond that when he uh, fought Anoki. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, when you talk about the greatest of all time, you can't argue with, with that. And the fact that he's going in at probably my favorite celebrity in the celebrity wing at this point, probably yeah. the most deserving. More so than Pete Rose? Pete Rose would be my top. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pete Rose, but Muhammad Ali, you know, uh, he wrestled Anoki, man. I yeah. mean, it don't get no bigger than that. Right. Or he he tried to box Anoki. I know he you, Superman in comics. You <laughs> <laughs> you have an appreciation for for Muhammad Ali oh, absolutely. for what he's done in his career. So hearing that he's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, what did that do in terms of your fandom? I mean, you had to have been excited about it, right? I mean, it's cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not <really> <laughs> I'm, I'm not a big fan of the celebrity wing. 
Right. I no. don't care. I don't think it's a big deal. I, I don't. I don't see why taking the, sh the spotlight away from the people that actually deserve to go into the Hall of Fame for things that they did in the ring or just outside of it. Celebrities that just showed up and I'm sure got paid quite well to show sure. up are also now going to be part of the Hall of Fame. It's like, whatever. Well, they, they did put Muhammad but, Ali in the new 2K24 game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, you kind of saw this coming, Q, right? Because he mentioned that he's on the video game. They uh, M Mattel came out with a very cool action figure, boxed action figure of him from his time at WrestleMania 1. Muhammad Ali, where where's he at on on your radar? Oh man, I'm I'm happy about this. I'm actually kind of surprised that he's that it took so long, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I, I for a minute I actually thought he was already in there, but when they announced him, I'm like man, I thought he was already inducted. But, right. You know, it's I'm cool. I'm cool with this. I'm, this is awesome. I. All in all, this has turned out to be a pretty decent Hall of Fame class, I feel like. And by all by all accounts, it looks like, gentlemen, Paul Heyman is the headliner of this thing. I don't think they, you know, when we're, you know, two weeks out, I don't think at this point they're going to announce anybody bigger than who they've got in there right now. Right. We've talked about the U.S. Express. We've talked about, you know, obviously Paul Heyman. We've talked about... Um, these other people that are going into the hall now with Thunderbolt Patterson and Muhammad Ali, it's kind of in with them reducing the number of inductees. I'm hopeful that these guys actually get some some mic time right, and that yeah. they're not so so re restricted on Except times. For Muhammad Ali. Except well, for well, Muhammad you know. I bet you Tatiana will do his induction. That's speech. I'm hoping for sure. For. Yeah. So. Now, the other thing that came across our radar uh, this week, and this was a big one for us personally, um, probably what's going to go down as one of, if not the most downloaded and watched <clears throat> documentaries um, in, in recent memory c coming from WWE, um, the story of Bray Wyatt apparently is going to debut on April 1st. Obviously, that that has a lot of people's attention on that level. Bray Wyatt, we talked about him last uh, on the last episode here. Just what a big deal he was, and how much bigger he could have been. You know, we lost him way, way too soon. But the other thing that really intrigued me about this, the Undertaker, is the narrator of this thing. And Q, he hasn't done anything like this. And you, you and I are big Taker fans. Yeah. So hearing that he was involved in this on such a intimate level, because you know you, you, you want to talk about narrating a person's story or a documentary, a lot of consideration has to go into that, right? I, I just went through this because I had you know a very short list of who I wanted for the documentary for the film that I'm working on. It's Brian. Um, <laughs> 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 um, but <clears throat> having Taker involved, man, what a stamp of approval, right? Oh, absolutely. And uh, it really, uh, man, I don't, it's, it's, it's really hard to put it into words, you know, because I'm really excited for this and um, really excited to see, you know, Taker's perspective because I, I feel like he has a lot that he can add to this. And uh, <laughs> knowing that they have, I don't, I don't know how close they were but they were close enough where he was named to be the narrator for uh, a documentary for you know Bray but uh, this is going to be a tearjerker for know, sure. this is definitely going to be a tearjerker this is going to be a, a, a very um, a touching documentary and tribute to Bray and I was actually thinking that it was going to lead to them announcing him to be in the Hall of Fame but probably not this year but this could lead to him being inducted next year. I, f you know, I feel like they've really put a lot of, of effort into maintaining the legacy of Bray Wyatt. Um, they, you know, they have this new deal, this new merchandise deal, where his family gets a, you know, a portion of the proceeds or what have you. Brian, as a fan of documentaries, do you have an expectation? On, on the surface of what we can expect when, when this thing drops on, on April 1st? Yeah, I think we all want to see it be uh, amazing. I think there's a very good chance it will be. I was going to avoid the trailer completely. I watched it on the way down here. Yeah. Uh, 
the one thing I'm thinking of, wouldn't it be great if in true brave fashion, seeing it's released April 1st, if you go to click on that thing and it goes, just starts out, goes black, you get a fiend face laughing, and it just cuts out, and they don't release it to April 2nd, April Fools. <laughs> <laughs> that would, I mean, that would be told, that would be a total yeah. brave thing. It would be a brave sure. thing, 100%. Yeah. yeah. But then we'd all be like, oh, because even have to wait <laughs> one more day. Right. It's like, I just want to see this. <laughs> but that, that would be a brilliant marketing plan, right? Because then you get immediate gauge on how this thing is going to do. Yeah, I mean... You, you guys are obviously more excited about it than I am. Get off the table. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but, you know, I, I I would like to, you know, Undertaker has been coming out a lot more, break, breaking the barriers of kayfabe between his one-man shows, doing more interviews, this, that, and the other. I'm really excited to see how he's going to do with the commentary or narration of this. But I'm really kind of hoping that they bring in some of his family members to give some perspective. You know, like I want to hear about, you know, the Firefly Funhouse and yeah. who was supposed to be those characters. And I want to hear from, you know, Bo Dallas, you know, or Uncle for. Howdy or yeah. whatnot. And I would love to hear from, you know, uh, Barry Windham and um, Mike, Mike Rotundo, yeah. you know. So there, there are aspects of this I want to see. I Look, let me, let me clarify here. I was a fan of, of Bray Wyatt. I wasn't a fan of the fiend. That that that's just I didn't care for that gimmick. I know you. I got, I'm going to get jumped in the parking lot. More than Call likely. Now. <laughs> I actually agree with that statement. I'm more of a fan of Bray Wyatt than the fiend. Not that I'm not a fan of the fiend, but I'm more of a fan of Bray Wyatt. It's just going to show. Uh, it, it it goes to show just the impact that this guy had on the business as a whole, and and just the overall potential of what could have been. Uh, with Bray Wyatt. One more time, you can uh, call in to the show, 810-331-2829. I'm looking at your list, Jason. I, I know one thing of news that didn't come up, but you were getting a call. We are getting a we're call. We're getting here. a call. Hang on one second here. Uh, welcome to Fatal 4-Way. Who are we talking with? Hi, Jason. Hi, boss. Hi, Uncle Levi. This is uh, Cannonball Alex Steele. How are you guys doing this uh, evening? Well, very well, sir. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, I have no doubt, to be a part of the show. What is on your mind? You got so something to weigh in here with uh, Mercedes or the Hall of Fame or Bray Wyatt or so something else on your radar? Well, um, I'd like to add That's to great. The Thanks Bray for calling Wyatt. in. <laughs> I'm just kidding, pal. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so with Bray Wyatt, um, I know that he's a, quite a polarizing, he's been a polarizing figure in the wrestling business, but uh, you can't say he wasn't creative. And I think, uh, you know, I, I think everyone's uh, pointing towards the fact that Bray Wyatt's initial character of his cult leader status in NXT was his best work. Um, I remember a promo he cut where he said, there are men who dream and fail. There are men who dream and don't get off their couch. And there are men who dream and change the landscape of this world. Uh, you know, he had a really big following. And I very, you know, I remember when he first debuted on Monday Night Raw against Kane, the yeah. entire Wyatt family came out. Um, you know, so and it was like they, they built that stuff over weeks. You know, they did vignettes. You know, when, when, when was the last time you saw a character debut and you know via vignettes you know that's a lost art you know and i wish it's something that i wish would come back because then it would give more substance to these characters more substance to you know give you more reason to watch and tune in um but uh, as far as the documentary goes you know i'm quite interested in it myself um you know I, i'd like to see you know the, the curtain peeled back just a little bit uh, you know, the fact that, you know, The Undertaker is the one that's going to be doing the narration, you know, just shows just how far and wide his influence has reached. You know, to, to have earned the respect of the dead man, you know, is a, you know, a, a hallmark achievement in and of itself. Would you not agree? Yeah, well, it's, you know, absolutely. You would have to agree with that, especially when you when you think about how the Undertaker is revered by his peers, both you know anybody that has shared a locker room with them, that's the locker room leader. It didn't matter who was champion. It didn't matter, like none of that mattered. Undertaker was the guy. 
And, you know, like, like these guys were saying, we're starting to see more of the real man behind the character. And projects like this um, is, is a testament to that. Now, getting back to, to Bray Wyatt and talking about the whole vignettes, you and I have talked about this on the, on the, hot, on the hot Tag podcast. We, we need those vignettes to introduce the characters to make us feel like we know these guys before they just pop up from one brand to the other. We see a lot of this when the NXT stars get the call up. Every once in a while, you have the 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 exception with like a Braun Breaker. Braun, you know, we already knew who Braun Breaker was, but you bring like a Carmelo Hayes up, and if I'm not somebody that pays attention to NXT week in and week out, I don't know anything about this guy. Why should I care about him? So yeah, I totally agree with you in the fact that the art of the vignettes is lost and it's something that i really wish would be reintroduced so that we can get re you know we can be acclimated to this new crop of talent now um what's your take i i know you have an opinion i know you and and your brother andrew are big fans of women's wrestling um mm -hmm. mercedes monet going to all of the elite wrestling i'm sure you have an opinion on this I do. Um, I will say that, um, you know, she was she was the product of the people that were around her in NXT. Uh, this was, you know, it, so that's not uh, and a knock on her necessarily, but it's just facts. Uh, you know, sorry, I made another call right. Right when I'm talking to you. We guys. take priority. But, they, um, you can send yeah, them the voicemail. Yeah. You're live on the air here, pal. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, pal. We're live, pal. <laughs> <laughs> but Mercedes Monet was a, a product of the people around her. Uh, not to say that she doesn't have talent, and she, you know she has her own following. But at this stage in the game, you know, she already has the marquee name behind her. Uh, you know, as a former WWE superstar, but that's what a lot of these stars are doing. It's like a lot of you see a lot of former WWE stars making their presence known in AEW, and you know, time will tell to see if she is going to make an impact. I know my brother was the biggest fan of her in her NXT days, right? Uh, and th and that that star has since faded in his mind. But you know, I, I I'm not completely writing her off. Uh, but then again, you know, as uh, Sean pointed out, you know, there are a lot of other more talented women in that locker room that may overshadow her, you know, because they, they've already stacked the deck, you know, quite a lot, you know, not just with ex WWE talent, but homegrown talent as well. And I think it's only a matter of time, sidebar, before WWE does the same thing they did in the late. In, in the in the sunset of the Monday Night Wars, where they start snapping up talent, homegrown talent, and making them stars on, on WWE, would you agree with that? Um, it's <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> I, uh, I I agree with the fact that she and we're talking about Mer Mercedes Monet here. It. She is very much a product of her environment. That's why she flourished the way that she did when she was in NXT because she was around all this other talent that forced her to raise the bar. Now, you said something and it immediately triggered an internal response, Sean, and maybe we can tag you in on this, but he said that Mercedes Monet has the name recognition to make an impact in AEW. I'm paraphrasing here, Alex, so just, you know, for, forgive me. Not, but yeah, not necessarily the name, but, you know, the, but the branding. Like, everybody knows she's, she used to be from WWE. Right. And a former WrestleMania main eventer. Correct. As Sasha Banks, though. That's what people, right. in my opinion, and, and tell me if I'm wrong here, Sean, people know Sasha Banks. They don't know Mercedes Monet. If you see the name, you're not going to, unless you see a picture of her, you're not going to know that that's Sasha Banks because she has not established herself individually 
on that mainstream level yet, right? Or am I off, am, am I off keel and I'm just not a fan and I'm letting a, a poison my perspective? No, already right off the bat, she's calling herself the CEO of AEW. The crowd is chanting CEO. We already got the EVPs of AEW. Yeah. They chant EVPs. She's already <clears throat> burying herself. It's not going to take too much longer to where she's going to bury herself so deep she's not going to be able to get back out of that hole. And it she, seems forced to okay, me. You're right. Yeah, because I, I, I watched her as she was coming out, you know, to the ring, and they were playing the music and everything. And, and, and the music has CEO as chants in the song. And I'm like, man, it feels so forced. You know, because I didn't know that that was her tagline. That was her name. You know, I didn't know they called her the CEO. I didn't well, know that. Think about it, though. She's trying to play off of the EST. Yeah. And the boss. You remember she was the yep. right. boss yep. right. in WWE. So now she can't use that. So she has to use something else. So she's burying herself. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't go for me. But what about with you, Brian? Um, I think you're correct when you say the name recognition, because. Like we said, she has a, a subset of fans. But some of those fans will not know her as Mercedes Monet. Right. They will know her as Sasha Banks. So they won't even catch on. So you're already taking that small fan base, chopping some of it away. I just want to point out, she's got the same name as someone else in AEW. Right? Mercedes Monet. Who would that be? Mercedes Martinez. I forgot about her, yes. Oh, Right, that's right. There's two girls with the same oh, first name. I forgot about that. <laughs> Interesting. Good point. Because <laughs> then that's another level of confusion that much like Brian was just saying, it's going to keep chopping away at her fan base. Because if you, if you don't oh, know boy. that name and you're just seeing it in print without pictures to associate with it, you're confused now. So this is a big problem, and I didn't even take into consideration that it's not like Jim the Anvil Nightheart and, and Jim Duggan. Like, you know those two were separate. Kevin Sullivan. Ke I mean, right. Kevin Dash. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of, of different aspects. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here with Mercedes in AEW. Um, you, real quick, what's your take with... Uh, with the Hall of Fame inductions of Thunderbolt Patterson and, and Muhammad Ali. I really like those two entries. Uh, I will admit I don't have a lot of knowledge about Thunderbolt Patterson, so kick me now. But, uh, <laughs> but, as, far as, but as far as Muhammad Ali goes, I totally agree. As, as was mentioned before, he was, part, he was part of the very first WrestleMania, and he's a very dynamic individual all by himself. I mean, he practically reinvented boxing. Right. You know, it, but you know, he, he was basically Mike Tyson before Mike Tyson was Mike Tyson. Sure. Uh, you know, and then Mike Tyson ended up being his own, his own entity. But the idea is, you know, he, he has worldwide fame. There's not a whole lot of people that don't know who he is, you know, except perhaps for Muhammad himself. But uh, <laughs> if that joke is tasteless, I apologize in advance. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> But, in advance, but, after he and, tells, and, him. right? <laughs> with, with all, with, you know, in all seriousness, though, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna, the WWE is gonna put in who they want to put into the Hall of Fame. Right, right. There's always this criticism. There's criticism of, you know, well, it's not really a wrestling Hall of Fame. I mean, well, what's what's the uh, what's the E stand for on the end of the company name? Right. You know, that's that's what this is at the end of the day. But you cannot deny that Muhammad Ali has had a significant contribution, not just to the wrestling business, but to entertainment and boxing. Right. You know, he's, he's, he's a worldwide recognized man, and he should be recognized for his accomplishments. Well, Alex Steele, we certainly appreciate you taking time to, to give the show a call for tuning in. We appreciate you. Uh, wish you the best, because I know you've got some things that, that are coming up. But we are going to run a quick timeout here in just a moment. Thanks for calling in. And you can call into the show live at 810-331-2829. Uh, but right now we are going to run a quick timeout. And we will be back with more of Fatal 4-Way live on ONTV right after this. Right after. All About Connections is a 90-minute suicide prevention training hosted by the North Oakland Community Coalition. 
This training uses the QPR method to educate and prepare participants to recognize warning signs of suicidal ideation and supply resources to their friends and family. We offer All About Connections to strengthen our bonds and ensure the Lake Orion community is fully supported by the people around them. We are available for ages 14 and up and can customize your training to your group. Whether it is a business owner and their employees or a group of parents with their future college students, this is a great opportunity to connect with one another and build confidence that everyone is prepared to help their friends and family in a crisis. If you would like to schedule a training or learn more about All About Connections, email Jill McCollum at jmccollum at nocmi.org. Hello, Sean, Jason, Brian, and Q. Wait a second, for a lifelong wrestling fans, I think you guys are the impractical jokers. That's right, Brian and Q. I, all right, Sean, you're really Sal Volcano, and Jason, uh, you're a uh, Murr. That's just, uh, anyway, anyway, I know you were four lifelong wrestling fans. We just started a fan interactive call-in wrestling discussion shown on, on TV called The Fatal Four-Way. Congratulations to you all. I hope it goes really, really well. And uh, you want a, a little catchphrase from the hardcore legend? Okay, let me see if I can drum that up. Uh, have a nice day. Oh, no, that's not the one you wanted. Ow! Have no, that's not it. Oh, dang, dang. That's it. Dang, dang. No, 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 no. It's bang, bang. Have a nice day. <laughs> Good luck on the show. That's when you know you're doing something, <laughs> is when you get WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley to uh, come out of the show for a quick shout out. That was really cool to see there. Yeah, that well, cool. yeah. And where's flannel? Yeah. 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 <laughs> they were cool. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Fatal 4-Way. We are as live as it can be here on ONTV. You can join into the conversation by calling in at 810-331-2829. Uh, Mr. Grugel. Yes, Mer. There <laughs> um, we have a, a roundup of sorts of upcoming live events on the independent level, so why don't we uh, take some time and, and highlight some okay. of these. Put on my old man glasses here and take a look-see here. Uh, if you're in Taylor tonight for the uh, New Edge Pro Show, uh, go home. It's been canceled due to weather. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so next one I have on the list is on March 23rd, 4 Us Wrestling presents Burning Down the Dream House at Grizzlies Bar and Grill in Wyandotte, Michigan. It's a double main event as you have the Great Tiger versus a mystery opponent. That guy is all over the place, you know, just TBA, DBA, the mystery opponent. <laughs> and uh, Grim Reality versus The Onset in a tag team dog collar match. And the notable name on that show would be the Perminator, Sam, B Sam Beal from TNA Wrestling. Uh, March 29th, Waterford, Michigan, New Edge Pro Wrestling presents their Wrestling Academy sh Showcase. Uh, bell time's at 7 p.m. The main event of that is Kenny Steele versus Xander Bennett. March 30th, Mr. Chainsaw Pro Wrestling presents Arm Battle at the Coliseum in Kalkaska, Michigan. Bell time of 6 o'clock. The main event is Aaron Orion versus Ray Larson, with notable names such as Ring of Honor, Silas Young, and TNA's Jason Hotch. I believe Alex is going to be on that show. The Cannonball Alex yep. still will be on that. That was just announced today. Yep. Uh, March 30th, Chaos Pro Wrestling presents the Chaos Cup at the VFW Hall 7573 in Baltimore, Michigan. Bell time 7 o'clock. It looks like it's going to be a deathmatch show, as in the main event you have Remington Roar versus Tommy Vendetta. Mm. Notable names are Randy West, Hoodfoot, John Wayne Murdoch, and Swartzy. Uh, we're almost done here. We have, uh, this, this one's going to be real quick. The High Guys Birthday Bash at UCW Bay City on March 30th. Location is Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, you can check their website for the location because they don't have it on their poster. Huh. Yay, indie <laughs> wrestling. Okay. Uh, we <laughs> and last but not least, we have UPW Wrestling, March 30th. They present Maximum Carnage at the Max Entertainment Center in Iron Mountain, Michigan. They Jeez. have a bell time of 7 p.m. Their main event is Joey Avalon versus Michael Jarrett for the UPW Championship. 
A notable name on that one is Congo Kong. You can check them out at upwuprising.com. And that is your Indie Roundup for this week. Yeah. We appreciate you uh, uh, compiling all of that information. And if you are in any of these areas, except for the one that was canceled, <laughs> uh, but you, I, I cannot encourage you enough to go check out these indie shows if you happen to be in the vicinity of one. Check out the stars of tomorrow here today. Q. What's that's, happening? That's me. What's on your mind? Hollywood Q. Hollywood Q. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, I want to. I want. I just kind of want to spotlight two things. Two things. I want to spotlight the uh, production uh, quality of WWE right now. Since Kevin Dunn has been pretty much exited left, exited stage left. Um, what they've been doing with the camera angles, how they've been panning around the cam, the, uh, the 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 ring, and sometimes you'll see them. Uh, take the camera and go straight into the backstage area to do interviews or do segments. Uh, to me, that's been a big improvement, and uh, I, I love it. To the production, the new production team that they have there, you know, they're doing a great job. And uh, another thing, The Rock. I want to talk about The Rock real okay. quick, real quick. Now, for me, I was a big fan of Hollywood Rock. We're kind of seeing that now, and. Uh, I want to spotlight the fact that he brought back the, the old Hollywood rock theme song. It had a little different entrance, you know, in, intro. You know, he had the lightning bolt and, you know, it started off with the uh, original theme, but then it switched over to the Hollywood rock theme. I'm a big fan of Hollywood characters. Uh, I love Hollywood Hogan. I love Hollywood rock. I love Hollywood Batista. A lot of people don't talk about Hollywood Batista. That was actually my favorite iteration of Batista, was Hollywood Batista. Uh, but I just wanted to spotlight that and uh, see, what do you guys got to say about the Hollywood I, of The Rock? Listen, if you're going to try to separate The Rock from that traditional babyface role that he's been in, mm -hmm. to trying to you know make that pivot to him being a heel to be part of the, the, the bloodline, storyline, you had to go that route yeah. because the last time we saw Rock as a heel was this big elaborate entrance and, and all this, and I'm very much with you. I prefer that that entrance and the whole lightning bolt thing, and then boom, he's there on, on the stage. Very oh, yeah. cool presentation. I appreciate it. I, I'm digging what, what they're doing for sure. What, what do you think? Oh, man. Well, I, I love it myself too, and you know why? Because the more Rock talks, the worse Cody looks. I mean, <laughs> what happened to wrestlers when men were men and they, they were burly? Like and, you know, no, this is not, not, nothing about cancel culture. I'm talking about big, strong men who don't cry on TV, you know. And, and, and it's so funny to me because the Rock calls them the Cody crybabies. And then what does Cody do? He cries on the air. <laughs> Way to make yourself look tough there, big guy. Let me go get a tissue for your boo-boo tears. You know, <laughs> I I so hope against hope that Roman Reigns, I know we're not talking about WrestleMania, but I so hope against hope that Roman Reigns comes away from this WrestleMania as a champion because Cody carrying the title, man, it's just going to look bad now because the Rock has just smoked him on every level. Okay, so r real quick sidebar, then we'll we'll get your take on this. If if Cody was to win the Universal Championship from Roman at WrestleMania, would you put more respect on the World Heavyweight Championship and Seth Rollins at that point? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure we're clear on this and we have it on record. So. Oh I'm, man, I'm, I can't wait two weeks from now. This is going to be a big show, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that here later on in the program. Brian, what what's your take on on Hollywood Rock? Uh, I'm, I'm going to skip the Hollywood Rock. I feel like you guys covered that. I'll go back to the first point: the camera work. I think I've, we've even talked about that. Like I mentioned, there was different camera angles and shots that they used, especially when they were going off the top ropes outside of the ring yeah, yeah. where they were following over. And I was like, that's different. It was different enough too that you immediately caught it with your eye. Right. It's yeah. like stuff like that. It's like, wow, like the, I, something is happening different and I enjoy it. Just goes with the overall, you know, that that wind of change that is going through world wrestling entertainment. 
from right. top to bottom. And it's the little things like that, the, the camera angles, the production value. You know, the one thing that I couldn't stand about Kevin Dunn was so many camera cuts. You know, you get fifth, you get 15 camera cuts in 20 seconds, man. My my eyes feel like they're going to blow out of my skull, you know what right. I'm saying? So I can appreciate that. And I've noticed in the clips that I've seen, AEW is, is toying around with different yeah, angles. Probably. They did this really cool interview spot with, with Renee Young or Paquette. Um, she was, as I believe Eddie Kingston was walking down the aisle for his match against Okada, like his, his entrance is full blown, but the camera was on her because she was on the aisle. It was like, it had that, uh, authentic reporter feel yeah. to it. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So both major companies are doing above, are going above and beyond to try to enhance the television product and that, and I can appreciate when a real effort is being made, I, you know, the whole Dynamite show went on a, an overhaul with new graphics, new open, new sets, and all this stuff. So I, while I'm not the biggest, you know, fan of AEW, I don't wave their banner. Um, I do appreciate what they're trying to do. Now, as we uh, come into the fourth and final segment of the show this week, we want to make mention real quick. In two weeks from tonight, the WrestleMania preview extravaganza, live 6 p.m., right where you're watching this right now. Mark your calendars, write the phone number down. It's at the bottom of your screen. You can call, you can text, you, you can correspond with, with the uh, Facebook live feed. We want you to be a part of the conversation. Mr. Balf. Yes. This is your Mount Rushmore of the Week segment, my friend. That is correct. What are we, uh, what are we forming here? We're going to do our Mount Rushmore of our greatest WrestleMania matches. Seeing we have the lead up to WrestleMania. And next week we probably won't do a Mount Rushmore because we have so much to cover. Well, a lot to cover, for sure. Um, Q, let's go with you first, man. What, what's your uh, Mount Rushmore? All right, all right, man. I really wrestled with this one because I kind of uh, want it. <laughs> I appreciate the point. <laughs> because I kind of wanted to uh, uh, cover different eras of uh, WrestleMania as well. And I wanted to start with the uh, more of a golden age. But, man, I after watching some of them back, I cannot go against Brett and Owen mm. for my first pick. It's Brett and Owen. Which we recently watched at work together. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> and then I watched it again after yeah. that. <laughs> and you got brother versus brother happening this year now. Right. Yep. 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 But it was a lot that went into that match. I mean, the chemistry that they had. And I know, you know, they, they've been down in a dungeon, you know, doing their thing. But, man, in front of the crowd, in front of the cameras, I mean, the crowd was into it. You had... Owen doing story. counter, counter after counter. There was such great storytelling before yes. it. Yes. And, like, I think the biggest part of that one is the shock that Owen ends up beating Brett Owen clean. wins. And yeah. I was a big Owen fan. So I just, just see Owen have his shine, even though Brett ended up winning the title later on that night. I mean, but uh, that match right there, it opened, I believe, it's, too. It's yeah, it was an opening match. One right. of the greatest, the greatest openers opening match of all time. history, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so Brett and Owen, that's okay. what I'm going with. All right. That's your Mount Rushmore? Oh, am I, am I doing all four? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought we were all okay. All right. All right. All right. So my number. <laughs> <laughs> so my number two is Brett and Austin from WrestleMania 13. Mm -hmm. we're talking about storytelling, and we're talking about the greatest double turn of all time in my book, in my history book. Uh, it's just just the way uh, it really catapulted Austin. You know, and Austin really already kind of did the. He started getting a 316 thing over, and he was really rising up. And just him being in that sharpshooter with the blood coming down, Ken Shamrock is in there like one of the most iconic images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it's just you know I couldn't go against. And I really didn't want to put two Brett matches on there, but you know it is what it is. Brett was he was he was pretty good, you know. He was all right. I think he, I think he did all right for himself. He you know, did so. some stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's my Stone Cold match though. Okay. So I, I enjoyed that. Match my number three. Oh man, I'm still wrestling. Number three, I'm gonna go Undertaker Sean WrestleMania 25. 
I knew you were gonna put that one in there. <laughs> yep. WrestleMania 25. So we all know the story between them two. I mean, even going back to that the, the Royal Rumble mm -hmm. uh, ending that they had, and man, I was just saying, man, I would love to see them tangle it up one more time. You know, after seeing them go at it like that, and Undertaker ends up winning the Royal Rumble, coming in at number 30. Right. Uh, but them two, when you talk about chemistry and you talk about storytelling, Sean, to me, you can actually do a Mount Rushmore of just Sean Michaels Mr. matches, you know, for WrestleMania. I mean, that's, oh, you don't agree. You can say what you want, but it's a 100% yeah, fact. I mean, There's a reason he's it's, twice on my list. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I could easily do some other Shawn Michaels matches, you know, and, and I actually wrestle with some of those Shawn Michaels matches. Uh, but my number four... I wanted to kind of do something that I didn't think you guys were going to do. And uh, I'm going to go Undertaker Triple H. Oh. Now, which one? They, they I'm gonna do three. I'm going to do the, uh, the, the WrestleMania, th uh, what was that, 20, uh, 28? Was the that Hell in a Cell? Yeah, the Hell in a Cell, okay. WrestleMania 28. Yep. yep. I'm going to do the Hell in a Cell because, uh, and to me, I, I, I kind of wish that was really the end of an era. You know, because they, they really played it up as an inner, end of an era. And, you know, as you see, Undertaker had a lot more after that. But uh, I think that match was pretty, pretty big with Shawn being the referee. And there we go, Shawn Michaels. I think of all there. the matches he had at WrestleMania, that match was the one that made me the most nervous of him losing. Me too. Yeah. So when he did lose to Lesnar, it was like very anticlimactic. Yeah. 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 Brian, what, what about you? Uh, so my first two right off the bat are both from WrestleMania 10. I also have Bret Hart versus Owen Hart on my list. Uh, second one from that match would be Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon, the ladder match. Mm -hmm. The first ladder match in WrestleMania. The Shawn losing his pants at one point. <laughs> <laughs> You've done that a the lot. only time my mom was ever a fan <laughs> of wrestling. Sure. <clears throat> um, love that match. I can remember watching that match over and over again at that time. Same. Um, next up, I'm gonna go WrestleMania 17, the second TLC match with the Dudleys, the Hardys, and Edge and Christian. That's the one where Hardy's hanging from the belt and he gets speared off the top of that one ladder. Another iconic <clears throat> image. I'm not even a huge, like, high spot person, but I can remember watching that with my buddies, like, on pay-per-view and us just jaws dropping. Yeah. That was just a, such a fun match to watch with friends live. And then last but not least, WrestleMania 20, I got the triple threat match, Shawn Michaels, uh, Triple H, Chris Benoit. Which, controversial, I don't care. I'm going to judge a person <laughs> by what they did in the ring and not outside of the ring. That was an awesome match. And then to have him and Eddie in the ring afterwards and their embrace is iconic to me. It's a shame that that moment won't be remembered in the way that it should have because of everything that happened with Benoit. Right. But from bell to bell, man, that it, it, it was, a, especially triple threat matches. Triple threat matches are a tricky animal, but if right. you can make it work, if you get the three right guys in there that have that chemistry, makes all the difference in the world. They made and that, that was too. on full display with WrestleMania 20. What about you, Sean? Well, when Q called it the Golden Age, I automatically decided to go fill out my AARP card because, <laughs> um, you know, my very first match I have on here from WrestleMania 1 is Hulk Hogan and Mr. T versus Piper and Orndorff. Mm -hmm. While it might not have been the greatest match in the world, seeing Mr. T come down to the ring with Hulk Hogan was like, oh, you know, yeah. incredible, incredible. Number two, this is a personal favorite of mine. Everyone rem does not remember this match, but I love it. It was Hillbilly Jim with the Haiti Kid and Little Beaver versus King Kong Bundy, Little Tokyo, and Lord Little Brook. And the reason why I remember this is I was so heartbroken when King Kong Bundy picked up Little Beaver and <laughs> slammed him <laughs> in the ring. <laughs> but, I mean, was it the greatest WrestleMania match of all time? No. But it has stuck with me for 40 or 39 years. Yeah. So, or 38 years. Well, I don't care. Uh, the Rock versus Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania 18. That's a good just one, yeah. the atmosphere, the crowd, the they didn't wrestle for 10 minutes. They just looked at the crowd in the beginning of the match. It was incredible. And then last but not least, 
<sighs> a Shawn Michaels match. Shawn Michaels <laughs> versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 26. <laughs> Incredible follow-up match to 25. Yep. Agreed. Um, a couple of these you guys have touched on here. Uh, uh, Austin and Bret Hart from 13. Undertaker and Shawn Michaels from WrestleMania 25. I th that just <laughs> from bell to bell, man, it was perfect. It was a perfect match. The, the, yeah. uh, the only Even thing after making those comments, you know, he puts a Shawn Michaels match on his list. No, <laughs> see, don't be like that. You almost I will got, be like that. <laughs> don't be like that. Um, Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant, the the match that brought ninety thousand people into the Pontiac Silverdome, uh, the biggest main event in. in as far as my fandom goes, there will never be a, a bigger, more anticipated main event than Hogan and Andre for, for me personally. But the match that stole the show is my all-time favorite professional wrestling match, Macho Man Randy Savage against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania III. Um, that was my Mount Rushmore. And as we start to wind this episode down we certainly appreciate you tuning in and uh we appreciate alex Steele for calling in so in the chat <laughs> yeah he's quite a bit in the chat right now he, uh alex said his uh personal favorite is sean michaels versus king uh kurt, kurt angle, angle wrestlemania 21 another which great is match. a great match yeah uh kurt angle is another one of those guys we we could spend an entire episode on kurt angle just what a remarkable uh, time he had in professional wrestling, but uh, be that as it may. Listen, a uh, quick programming note. Um, two weeks from tonight, we've mentioned it, uh, we, and we will say it again here so that you can make your plans. So that winds up being Friday, April the 5th, 6 p.m. We will be back here live on ONTV on Facebook.com slash OrionONTV and on the television stations of this fine network. And it is all th it is the WrestleMania 40 preview show, and it's all things WrestleMania. And by that time, you know, the weekend starts that night, gentlemen, yeah. with with the they have SmackDown at eight o'clock, and then immediately following that, we will see the induction of the class of 2024 into the WWE Hall of Fame, and then Saturday and Sunday is R WrestleMania 40. So what about the Slammies? I wonder when the Slammies are gonna be. I see, I, uh, I didn't even know that was gonna be a thing, but I don't, I can't believe that they're gonna incorporate that into the same weekend as the Hall of Fame. I always felt like the Slammies were more of a year-end thing. I always thought they were just a gimmick. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, for sure, but like, when give give Owen, Owen a gimmick. I'm not I a nugget. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. I thought the Slammy Awards were underutilized. They the the one that they had in 1987. I still have it on VHS tape, and I will go back and watch. It was just such a fun show, you know. But that correlated with Pile Driver was released that year, so they did a lot of live musical acts with the wrestlers and stuff. But the 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 concept of the Slammy Awards, I absolutely loved it. I really did. Um, you can check out all of our great podcasts where you, wherever you listen to podcasts. Just look for PFC Entertainment Network. Any comments, questions, show topic ideas, feedback of any sort, you can hit us up over on the Facebook page of PFC Entertainment Network or pfcnetwork.net, the official website of this network. With that, we appreciate you tuning in, and we will see you in two weeks' time right back here live for the special WrestleMania preview edition. Until until then, we <laughs> will we will uh, see you next time right here on the Fatal Four Way live on ON TV.